Bless you. We are so delighted that you are taking this special series of lessons. Not only do we teach here to you, but by means of television, by means of cable and satellite, uh, these go into uh, millions of homes. We are on the Trinity satellite from Los Angeles, on the PTL satellite from Carolina, both of them reaching many hundreds of cities uh, that we do not reach normally. We are on our own cable systems and our own TV stations, and we do them also by radio. And so millions will be able to enjoy the same studies that you enjoy. If you do not have a syllabus on teaching of demons and deliverance, principalities and powers, get one immediately from our, from our office, and uh, so you can study it together. <clears throat> this is God's hour for this, for this material. This is God's hour for us to know how to stand up strong against evil and against uh, wrong and against the devil, making it real clear. In, in this uh, series of lessons that we are teaching to you, we have come to the area called areas of demon domination, seeking to s show you how they will seek to dominate areas. And we began with empires, showing you how they seek to control empires and then nations uh, from the very top, you know, empires. And if we had time uh, to go into that, uh, by, ser by searching out books, you would find that, uh, just like you find in the Bible regarding the Babylonian Empire, uh, that, that they, they were governed by witchcraft. Any problem that came up, the, 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 the king called for all the witch doctors, all the astrologers, uh, you see, to, to come in and, and to, uh, to, to see about this, and all the sorcerers. And so it was, it was witchcraft. The devil seeks to dominate nations uh, through evil, and, and uh, he destroys nations in this way. And these, the second area uh, of uh, spirit domination is cities. If the devil can't get a country, he'll take a city. If he can't get the whole of France, he'll take Paris, you see. Uh, and, and if he can't get the whole of America, he'll take Las Vegas. And, and he, he, he'll take Chicago. He'll take New York uh, or Washington or, or Philadelphia. He, he'll, he'll, he'll take cities. And in them, he will congregate evil people. He, he, will, he will congregate uh, uh, all kinds of, uh, of, of, of various teachings and teachings uh, around Los Angeles. Uh, they come in from Tibet uh, to, to reside there. They come in from Calcutta, India to reside there. And, and uh, every kind of a situation in the world uh, that has nothing to do with the true and the living God, he sends in there to make a nest. You know, and is trying to pull some people into that nest until finally he, he dominates a whole area. We went into that very thoroughly in our last lesson. So if you didn't see the last lesson, by all means uh, obtain it. It would be what we call lesson 10 in this series of demons and deliverance, principalities and powers. Now, today's lesson is part three. Part three of this lesson on areas in which the devil seeks to dominate. And it's possibly the most important of the three. And it is in the area of what we call living matter and, and, and demons. Uh, and this, it's, it's totally uh, uh, living matter. In, in cities, it's the government they wish to control. And, and the soothsayers and, and the... Uh, and the uh, and the people that are full of witchcraft, they, they try to get to the top man. Listen to me, listen to me, do what I tell you to do. You see, and, and that's the way that it governs the city, uh, through witchcraft. And, and nations are saying, uh, mighty empires have fallen because uh, the witches uh, gave them the wrong information. And they went down. They said, you can do this. And they couldn't do it at all. You can go out against this army, and you will win. And they were false prophets. They did not win. They, they, they were liars, and they were destroyed. If you studied this in history, you would become amazed at the part the devil has had to do in the destroying of empires and cities. But today's lesson has to do with living matter. In the living matter areas, we are going to use three, uh, three different uh, areas in, in living matter. The Lord Jesus said in Luke's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 30, uh, uh, Jesus, in speaking to a demon-possessed man, says, What is your name? And the, the demon-possessed person spoke back and said, uh, Legion, uh, because many devils were entered into this man. That's in Luke uh, chapter 8 and verse 30. And it is also in other, in other areas of, of, of the Bible. And, and so in this area where 
uh, there are, are a legion of spirits inside of one man. Uh, a legion was about uh, 2,000. Uh, it can be from 2,000 to 10,000 in the Roman army. And, and so a legion of these evil spirits could inhabit this person. Now, in dividing this into three parts, we will begin first with, with beasts. You say, can a, can a beast have a spirit in it? Uh, yes, when I was a boy, uh, we often had to kill a horse or to kill a dog or even a cow or a bull that they had become so furious, even turning on their own masters until they had to be destroyed. They were not normal anymore. Some power outside of them were dominating them and they became fearsome beasts. Uh, and especially in, in horses. They would suddenly become so agitated until even their trainers could not get close to them anymore. Uh, they, they were full of something that wasn't, wasn't the ordinary uh, for them. Now, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 29, uh, the Bible tells us a story of where Jesus was casting spirits out of a man and that they went into some pigs and hogs and that the devils entered into those animals and that those animals were so agitated that they could not endure these evil things coming from the outside that were not animal, they were spirits, that they ran themselves into deep waters and committed suicide. They could have ran up the mountain squealing and yelling and falling, but they didn't. They, they, they went straight for deep waters in order that they could commit suicide. Now, if you would talk to farmers and other people that deal with animals, they will tell you stories, many of them, of how they have noticed peculiar beasts which, which actually possessed a strange spirit. Now, in my traveling around the world, we've seen this a lot of times. And possibly, uh, they had to be destroyed because they could not live peaceably with other animals, nor with those who owned them, uh, the, the humans that owned them. And so, uh, a beast... Uh, can be uh, filled with an evil that you, they can't be tolerated. They either have to be incarcerated for the rest of their lives or are turned into a great wilderness or, or they have to be uh, 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 destroyed. Then we have parts of the human body, parts of the human person uh, that can be possessed. Uh, several times the Lord Jesus cast uh, spirits of deafness. It was a spirit and a spirit of deafness out of a person. And other times a spirit of dumbness out of a person. It was a spirit, and when it was cast out, then that person was normal, either in their hearing or in their, in their speaking. Uh, you find that in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9 and verse 32. Jesus also cast out spirits called infirmity spirits. That they, they just caused a person to be infirm. They just felt sick. They didn't know why they were sick, and, and no medicine did them any good. They just, just felt sick. And I've met many people who actually have a spirit of infirmity. It dances around all over their body. One day their arm's sick, and the next day their head's sick, and the next day their chest's sick. It just moves all over their person. They have a spirit of infirmity. And this means that the devil or an evil spirit can take over a certain portion are part of a human body and, and not remove itself until someone with God's power comes and rebukes it with divine authority and says, hey, hey, we understand you. We know you. Come out of there. And I command you to go into the dry places. I command you to go into, into a place where there are no humans, devoid of human persons, and get out and stay away. And then they have to leave. And that person then is free. And then there is what we call the unregenerate uh, mankind who comes under the complete domination or what we call possession of the devil. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus tells us about a man who was demon possessed and then delivered of that evil spirit. And that spirit, Jesus said, walked through dry places looking for rest. He couldn't find any. They, they never have rest until they're inside of a human. Sometimes later, this same spirit returned to look upon the man where he had once lived inside of this man. He found uh, this man empty, empty, and he found him swept, and he found him garnished. So he found three situations there. Being swept meant that the world had been taken away from him. He, he'd gotten that done. Being garnished meant he was decorated. The, the man's religious decorations uh, looked good. Uh, he, he carried around a hymnal and, and, and a prayer book, and paper. he could quote the 23rd Psalm, you know. He was decorated with religion. He was a good church member, you see. But the spirit, but the Bible says his spirit was empty. He was empty. He had, he had no spiritual life in him. He had no power of God within him. The Bible says he was empty. This demon, instantly the Bible says, Jesus said, 
realized this man had no resistance, had no resistance to him. That he had no power there to resist anything. And so he went back into the dry places. He found seven, seven other evil spirits. And the Bible says they were even worse than he himself. And together they came back. They overwhelmed this poor man. And they overpowered him. And they repossessed him. And Jesus said the last end of that man was worse than the first. Now, if this wasn't a Jesus story, you might turn up your nose at it. But being a Jesus story, you may not turn up anything but your faith to understand it. This amazing story uh, tells us about a, a devil dwelling in a man, cast out, and came back, and Jesus told the story. Now, now Jesus came into the world that he might deliver men from the devil's power. In Acts 10 and 38, it says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost, with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed, oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So his business upon the face of this earth was to relieve these people that were hurt by the devil's power so that they would be free from the devil's power, so that they would not go around saying, oh my, oh my, oh my, the devil's hurting me. Neighbors, God made you to be free. And you don't, have to, you don't have to be under the devil's power of any kind whatsoever. You can be free. Jesus tells us of another instance in the Gospel of Luke chapter 8 and verse 2. It says, A certain woman which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Now, she had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. So here was a woman who had been healed of evil spirits, and he says healed, you have to take it like it is, evil spirits and infirmities. So not only did she full of devils, she was sick all the time. Her name was Mary Magdalene, and he had cast out of her seven evil spirits. Here's one of the most remarkable of Bible, of Bible stories, of Bible events. The Bible says specifically and emphatically that this woman had seven evil entities dwelling within her. Jesus cast them out one by one, got every one of them out, and she became a devoted disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this, to my mind, is conclusive proof that humans can have evil spirits possessing them and that Jesus Christ positively can set you free. What he has done to Mary Magdalene, he can do to you. She became so precious that she was the first one who preached the resurrected message. Jesus said, go and tell my disciples and Peter. So she was the first resurrection preacher, a person out of whom he had cast seven, seven entities of evil and had set her free. And Luke's gospel again in chapter 4, verse 33, Jesus tells about going up to worship. In the synagogue, he discovered a man possessed of the devil. This man felt very comfortable in church, you see, until Jesus arrived. And he got all upset when Jesus arrived. As long as that bunch of hypocrites were in there, no problem, no problem whatsoever. But when Jesus arrived, he enjoyed the dead sermons and the dead prayers. You know, they were no problem to him. But when the Lord Jesus walked in, these devils began to scream. We found the same thing. They, 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 that spirits were very quiet until God's servant came on the scene. And brother, they, do we ever call it Rukas? And, and so in Luke 4, 34, it says, I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. These were evil spirits speaking to Jesus. Jesus said, come out. And instantly the man was delivered of the unclean spirit. Now, neighbors, times have not changed. As they were then, they are today. There's still, there's still people going to churches around uh, that have evil spirits in them. And the people there, oh, they say he's a little odd. He's a little strange, you know. And they can't detect that that person is possessed and needs another person of faith to say, I set you free by the mighty hand of God. There are people loitering, loitering around churches today, depressed, sad, broken down, who need God's delivering power. May the Lord set them free. One of the amazing deliverances in the, in the Bible is the healing of the demoniac of Gadara. We read to you a few words about that a few moments ago. The Bible says that this man was possessed of a, a legion. Man, man, man. I guess that's more than we have any other record of. A legion of bad spirits, of, of demon spirits. And it, the Bible specifically tells you they tried to bind him. They tried to incarcerate him. He'd take off his clothes and would go to the cemetery and sit on the tombstones, yelling and bellowing and gashing himself with stones and making blood run out of his body. He, he was a possessed man. 
Now, as you know, a legion in a, in, in a, in a, mili in a Roman military army uh, has something to do with, say, 2,000 up. Some say 5,000, some say more, but it was a lot of people. And that's how many he had in him, at least 2,000. Uh, the man of Gadara, uh, that, that were possessed of these evil spirits, needed deliverance, but nobody could even tame him. Uh, they couldn't even keep him in his home. Uh, they couldn't keep him in jail. He tore up everything around about him and lived in the cemeteries. And so these spirits, uh, uh, so many of them, they don't need space. Uh, they're not bodies. And so you say, how did so many get inside of him? They don't need any space. They don't take up space. A million spirits could live in one place if, if, if they wanted to uh, because they do not need physical room. And for this reason, thousands could be inside of this one physical person. Uh, this man of Gadara. And Jesus casts these demons out of multitudes of people. In and, and, and Matthew 8 and 16, it says, When the even, even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, you see, with his word, and healed all that were sick. And it says here that they brought many. Do you think the world's any better today than it was then? You better believe me. If Jesus walked through our streets today, he'd spend most of his time casting out spirits out of people. Spirits of lust, spirits of anger, spirits of hate, spirits of greed. Who? He, he, would, he would have his hands full, and you better believe it. And, and, uh, and Luke's Gospel, chapter 4 and verse 31, it says, The devils also came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them and suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. I do it the same way. When they want to talk, start talking and saying, We know you're Lester Sumrall. We know where all you've been. I said, Shut up. We don't need any information from you. We come to cast you out and to throw you into the void of space because your, your leaders, the prince and the power of the air, we put you back up there out of the way. Or we send you into uninhabited places to leave humans alone. And, and so we want people to be free by God's mighty power. Now this shows you a, a, a three, three areas, you know, where demons seek to control nations, where demons speak, seek to control cities and population areas, and, and where demons seek to control persons, men, women, little children. Some of the worst cases of demon possession I've ever seen were little children. As some of them you don't understand how they get in. We don't know. We just know this, that, that Jesus Christ has come to set people free. And oftentimes people say, you know, yeah, Jesus did that 2,000 years ago. Uh, but how about today? I'd like to tell you something. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 9 and verse 1, uh, Jesus called his 12 disciples together and, and, and read it yourself, and gave them power and authority over all devils. Put a little circle around the word all. Would you do that? Uh, all, all devils means all devils. Brother, there is not a demon that can overcome anybody of the church. Not one. There's victory in the name of Jesus, and you better believe it. This simply means that there was no devil who could stand against these, these disciples, disciples of the Lord. They were ordinary people. They were fisher people, most of them. And they weren't, you know, sublime people. They weren't highly trained people. They were just those uh, of the common people of the land, and he gave them authority, and they set humanity free. Oh, you say, well, that was the 12 apostles. Then let's go to Luke chapter 10. Uh, that's just the next chapter from chapter 9 where you were. Look, Luke chapter 10, and you'll read these signs, and after these things the Lord appointed 70 70 disciples also, and sent them forth by two uh, before his face into every city where he would go, and said unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers in the harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry not purse, nor script, nor shoes, nor salute any by the way. And unto who, who so a house you enter, Say, first, peace be to this house. If the son of peace uh, be there, your peace shall remain upon it. If not, it shall return to you. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as are given, given you. Uh, for the labor is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house and into whatever city you enter. Uh, and they receive you. Uh, eat and such things as are set before you. And heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, The kingdom of God is nigh unto you. But unto whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, uh, go your ways out of, into the streets of the same and say, even the very dust of your city which cleaveth to us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, uh, be ye sure of this, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you, but I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable on that day for Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom, than for that city. That's what Jesus says. He says, Woe unto you, Chorazin, woe unto you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works that have been done in Tyre and Sodom, which have been done in you, they had great 
uh, they had a great while ago repented, uh, sitting in sackcloth and ashes in their repentance. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sodom in the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which exalted to heaven, uh, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you and heareth me, uh, he that despiseth you despises me. He that despiseth me despises him that sent me. Take it right back to God the Father. And the seventy returned with joy, listen, saying, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. So you see, it wasn't just twelve. Here were seventy. You don't even know their names. <laughs> but Jesus did. He chose them. And so there were seventy. Now you say, but that, uh, that again was the seventy. You know, unbelief is a, is, is, a, is a nasty thing. It won't ever stop. Let's go a little further. Then you go to Mark chapter, gospel, uh, the gospel Mark chapter 16, and, and you read in verse uh, 17, this is the last chapter in the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 16, verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. Now, this was spoken just before he went to heaven, after his resurrection, you see. And this was the last thing he ever said on the face of the earth. Now, what are you going to do with that? How, how are you going to categorize that? How are you going to make excuses uh, for that, that the church is not responsible to set people free? That, uh, that was only done 2,000 years ago. Uh, the, the, not today. And there's some people that don't even believe that today's people are, are, are filled with the devil. Well, well neighbor, you go to an insane asylum and talk to them. You'll find out pretty quick. There are people in there that are perfectly normal for hours and sometimes days, and the devil comes, and brother, uh, uh, you can't hold them. You have to put them in solitary confinement and lock the door as they are under such a strange power. And they, they know that, those that keep those. And, and the prisons are saying, men, they say they go berserk. No, the devil stops functioning and operating through them. And they don't know what they're doing. They give themselves over, over to the devil. And so it isn't a matter that people are not hurt today. Uh, there are many hurt. And, and millions not in insane asylums are hurt in their homes. Some are locked in their own homes inside of certain rooms and can't get out. And others can get in and out. But they are tormented almost daily almost daily. They are tormented. The great commission of Jesus is commanded to you and to me and to anybody that believes upon him to take power over demon spirits and to cast them out in his holy name. And that in these last days, there will be multitudes of people needing to be set free. The church must gird itself for the greatest battle in the history of mankind. And that battle is a spiritual battle to set human beings free from the devil's power. Neighbor, may that spirit get into you, a spirit uh, that will go out and set people free. Uh, you say, what if it don't work? Now, if you're going to work in unbelief, it won't work. You've got to know that he that is in you is greater than he that's in the world, that he that is in you can set anybody free, that he is not limited in any way to anything, and that he can set anybody free. You've got to know that before you go. You've got to be set free first. And then anybody that you minister to, they can be set free by God's mighty power. The church, the total church, oh, you poor little churches on street corners, supporting the World Council of Churches out there, helping all of those that are, uh, that, that are in battle, and uh, helping all of those that are insurgents and trying to overthrow governments, trying to set things right, you know, trying to get the world right. The world will never be right on a battlefield. The world is going to be made right in the prayer room. The world's going to be made right at the altar. The world's going to be made right in intercession of seeking God and casting out evil and casting down that which is evil. Killing one another will never set anything right. You've got 6,000 years of history to show you that the world is not made right through bloodshed. The world is made right through prayer. The battle is going to be greater right now and in the future than it has ever been in the past. Demons will try in a greater measure, in a larger measure than ever before, to take over nations, uh, cities, and persons, and especially persons. Especially, there's not going to be a family in this nation not tormented with somebody with an emotional imbalance. And we need to have the authority of God to bring about a total victory in the hearts and the lives of these people. Christians, we must not fear anything that needs to be done for God on the face of this earth. We must never fear the devil. There is not one scripture in the Bible that says we should fear the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's in James chapter 4 and verse 7. It does not say that the devil will crawl. 
It does not say that he will run. It says he will flee. And flee means to run with terror. Run with terror. If you can put flee into his heart, why are you afraid? We have the power of the Almighty God that made the universe. And, and we should use it to bless and to help people. The devil is afraid of you as a child of God. Why are you as a Christian afraid of him? There's no need for both of you to be afraid.